Hi everyone, it's Sharon. I am back today to do my first ever tutorial for you. I had quite a number of people um, ask me to demonstrate how I did this uh, full leather look on the last gar or last project I did this gardener's notebook. Um, so I'm going to attempt to do it and see how it comes out. Um, I'm trying to do it so I can do it on camera. Usually I would do this in my sink. So what I'm doing is I'm taking an extra piece of the file folder I used for my last project. And it's kind of a dark green on one side and this tan color on the other side. And the, verse, the first step is just very simple and easy. You submerge it in water. And normally I would do this in my laundry room sink, but today I just um, used a shallow pan so I could do it under the camera. So I completely submerge this file folder in the water. And we will let that sit, um, I would say typically maybe 30 minutes or so till it's nice and soaked and pliable. And at the end of 30 minutes, I will be back to show you the next step. All right, I am back and this has been soaking for about 30 minutes. And about halfway through, I flipped it over on the other side. Um, don't ask me why, I just <laughs> seem like it should have equal time on its back and belly. I don't, whatever sits right in my head is what I tend to do. I don't always follow instructions or have a reason or um, purpose for what I do sometimes. If it seems right, I just do it so. Um, so the next step is to take this out of the water and start crumpling it. And these file folders are pretty sturdy, but last time I was a little too aggressive and had some tears in there. Um, and that's one good reason for using a full sheet so that you can kind of work around that to cut your pieces for whatever project you're making. Um, I don't mind a few rips and tears here and there. It makes it look a little more authentic. But, and I just do that multiple times. So I'll pull it apart and then make some new crinkles and creases in there. And it's pretty pliable at this point. Try to get around the edges as well so you don't just have it in the middle. And you can see, I mean, you never know what you're going to end up with. My water is pretty green, so a lot of that ink came out of it. It'll be a lot more faded, weathered looking, which is fine with me. Okay, I think that has enough crinkling in it for my taste. I did bring a towel because I am a very messy crafter. Move that aside. Okay, so next step is really to just lay this out on a very flat surface and let it dry. And I think drying time is going to vary depending on your climate, um, your house temperature and things like that. I am in Wisconsin in the middle of winter, so my house tends to be a bit drier than normal. Um, so when I come back, I will let you know how long it took to let this dry. I think my last piece, hmm, I don't even remember. I think it was maybe four to six hours, something like that. But we'll see how long this one takes and I will be back. Okay, I am back and I would say about four hours or so have passed and this is pretty well dry. So you can see it still maintained its crinkles and it's ready to be waxed and protected. Um, what I used for to put the wax coat on the top is this product. It's called Dorland's Wax Medium. And I don't remember where I got it from. I'm going to guess Amazon. And it's designed, um, looks like for encaustic work. Um, mixed media kinds of projects, but it is a sealing medium and a protective matte finish. So I think it works pretty good. It's designed for paintings, wood, paper, plastic, metal, and photographs. 
I was thinking you probably could also use um, any type of like leather protector or wax or polish or something like that, or um, even Mod Podge. I didn't want a shiny finish, so I didn't try that, but um, a matte gel medium, any of those kinds of things probably would work as well. So you just have to experiment. I think rather than boring you with watching me wax this whole piece, <laughs> I'm going to grab another smaller piece. This is another, um, just a smaller piece that I also soaked and crinkled. So this one is dry. What I typically use is a small piece of t-shirt material. And I just get that in the wax and just start rubbing it on in a circular motion. And I give it a nice generous coat to make sure there's enough to seep in. It does darken it up a little bit, which is what you would typically expect from a wax. Work that in the creases pretty well. And I did put it on both sides of the paper. So I will also do this side. Just have to be careful not to get too aggressive. Otherwise, it will bend the paper. Okay, and just get this last corner. Okay, so this is now pretty tacky to the touch. And what I did, um, what I would suggest is to leave it sit for a good 24 hours. So that's what I will do. I'm just going to set it on my paper, leave it here for a day. And then when it is, um, has rested for about 24 hours, I would go over it again with a dry cloth and just buff it out and take off any excess that still might be on the surface. And what I will do is come back again uh, tomorrow and just kind of show you what it looks like after it has dried a bit. It's going to look pretty much the same, but um, we'll check in again and see what it looks like in a day. All right. See you later. Okay, I am back and it has been about 24 hours since I put the wax on this piece. And it is not tacky anymore, so that's good. And it's very soft and supple, just like a piece of leather would be. So I really like that. Um, what I do at this point typically is take a dry portion of my rag and just buff it out a little bit so that you can remove any excess that might be sitting on the surface yet. And with this type of wax, the more you buff it, the shinier it gets. So depending on how you want that surface to look, I don't mind a little bit of shine. It gives it a more authentic look, I think. And then that is it. Your piece is ready to be used. Now, one thing I didn't mention is if you are only um, using one side of this to the outside of some type of project, if you're gluing it down or folding it on itself, you really don't need to polish both sides. Um, I did on this piece because I'm intending to use it um, to make something that I did yesterday. I was playing around with some scraps I had. So I made this little wallet type journal and I think it turned out pretty cute. And it's, I'm still on the garden theme. <laughs> so I stitched around it. I made this little clasp. Put a grommet on there and then cut some circles. Put those on and then on the inside, I made a couple pockets. So I have this one up here, you can stick something in there. And then I have this one. And I actually tried uh, to do some embossing with that leather-like material. And it was so-so eh, successful. I think I tried to do it a little bit too soon. I maybe would wait a few days um, because it got a little mushy in spots, I think it wasn't quite as dry as it maybe should have been, but I'll give it another try again, I think. 
And then on the back side, I have the same couple pockets. And then I took some images and just made little pages in here. These are from uh, Emily at Junk Journal Inspirations. It's a cute little kit full of botanical images. And then I interjected some graph paper. So this I thought would make a really fun little booklet for planning out your spring garden or something like that. So that's what I have for you today. And there's my first official tutorial demo kind of video. So maybe I'll be doing some more of these in the future. Until next time, bye-bye.